I have shouted my love of Sega Rally in multiple videos on this channel. From the arcade original to the spectacular Saturn port, it's one of my favorite racing games of all time. When Sega Rally 2 came along a few years later, I enjoyed that one too, and even came to appreciate the Dreamcast port for its gameplay and content. After that, Sega Rally went on a hiatus for a number of years with no new arcade or home versions, and it wouldn't be until 2006 when another one finally showed up. That was on Sony's PlayStation 2 of all systems, and it was only released in Japan and South Korea for the 10th anniversary of the franchise. While that meant many Sega Rally fans would never play it, I was still into importing games at that point and decided to add it to my collection. Better yet, I picked up the limited edition that also came with a PS2 version of the original arcade game. I was super excited to play it back then, and in this episode, we will go over whether or not Sega Rally 2006 lived up to my lofty expectations. I hope you guys enjoy my review of Sega Rally 2006 for the Sony PlayStation 2. Sega Rally 2006 was originally meant to be released in mid-2005 to coincide with the 10th anniversary of the original Sega Rally Championship, but was delayed until January 2006. It's the first Sega Rally developed that wasn't based on an existing arcade version, and it's the only mainline version of Sega Rally to be locked to a single platform. Firing it up, you are presented with multiple race modes and options to play around with. You get an arcade mode, which is a series of four races on different tracks similar to the original Sega Rally. There are different series available with different track combinations, and you'll need to battle both the clock and enemy AI to be number one. The time attack mode is your typical practice option. Here you will have the track all to yourself with no worries about other cars or that damn clock stopping your fun early. It's a great way to become familiar with the gameplay. Finally, you have a career mode where you can gain new cars and customize them, enter races to win credits, and move up to a professional mode that offers peak challenge for those of you that live and breathe racing games. Races start out as simple time trial events, but quickly move up to one-on-one -on -one challenges and full grid events. The gameplay for Sega Rally 2006 feels like a combination of Sega Rally and Sega Rally 2. It has the first game's great feel to its weight and power slide mechanics, while also retaining the enhancements in physics that Part 2 brought along. The car responds great to dips, ruts, and different surface types you'll encounter. Every car is responsive and, of course, you have a co-pilot to point out what's ahead. Needless to say, if you are a fan of the series, you will immediately feel at home here, and this gameplay couldn't be any easier to pick up and play. Its core is very much arcade-style fun, with a heavy emphasis on speed over the slow-and-go realism of something like Gran Turismo. The visuals here are really good. I mean, this was early 2006 and the Xbox 360 had been on the market for a bit, but I was still well impressed by it. It doesn't run in progressive scan, but it does give you a widescreen mode, and I just love the way the tracks look. You get lots of little details like spectators, and there are loads of effects for things like time of day and weather. It does have the typical PlayStation 2 aliasing issues, but it doesn't ruin the overall presentation in the slightest. Like a lot of Polygon racing games, the replay mode is just gorgeous, and I could sit for just about forever and appreciate its television-like camera angles. The performance is impressive as well. The frame rate is far more stable than what we previously saw at home with Sega Rally 2 on the Dreamcast, though you will notice some Polygon pop-in here and there on some of the trackside details like trees, but it is far enough into the background to not be an eyesore. I did find the nighttime stages a bit too dark for my comfort, and had real trouble navigating the courses effectively. The headlights really do not illuminate far enough ahead of you to be effective, and you'll need to punch up that brightness a bit to deal with it. 
Aside from that, this is still a good looking and running racer that doesn't stray too far from its arcade roots. It was definitely the prettiest of the Sega Rally home games at that point. Sega Rally has always had some memorable music, and Sega brought in multiple composers from every corner of video gamedom. This group has credits to their names like Sonic, Virtua Fighter, Jet Set Radio, Mass Effect, and many others. The end result is quite a change for the series, but they still set a great tone for each race. There's a ton of them too, so if you ever get a chance to sample some, please do. Here are a handful for your enjoyment. Critiquing this entry into the Sega Rally series basically comes down to your own expectations. If you just wanted a better looking version of Sega Rally with more cars and tracks but plays the same, you got it. This does not stray far from the formula of the first two games. Gameplay is similarly slick and bouncy, with a huge emphasis on power sliding and speed. Rarely will you need to worry about heavy braking unless you are navigating a hairpin and most tracks are designed with plenty of room to run wide open for a good majority of the time. That means for those of you looking for Sega Rally's gameplay to evolve beyond its arcade roots may come away disappointed. By 2006 we had a great number of home rally based racing games that were far more realistic in regards to handling and the overall structure of the sport itself. I personally love the arcade style play so I was fine with it. But if you are expecting something with the complexity of the later Colin McRae games, you may be let down. It's also worth noting that because this game was never localized in English, the career mode is rather difficult to navigate if you do not read Japanese. There are lots of little customizations and submenus that you have access to, and you'll need to do some trial and error to find out what each one does. This will likely turn off those of you that prefer not to dedicate that kind of time to something as simple as trying to set up a race properly, leaving pretty much the arcade and time attack modes as your only easy options. This is not a small problem, because you really do need to understand the tweaks you can make to your car to actually compete, because Sega Rally 2006 is a hell of a difficult game. Despite not being based on an arcade game, that clock is still there and as brutal as ever. The pace setting AI are like immovable bricks on the track and will make life a living hell at the worst possible times. This extends to the arcade mode as well, where the time can and will run out no matter how well you're doing. You need to practice quite a bit to get a time that doesn't see your game in prematurely with a timeout. If you buy the limited edition of Sega Rally 2006, you get the original arcade version of Sega Rally packed along with it. It comes in running and looking pretty solid and is even 480p, a resolution higher than the Model 2 original. It plays fairly well on the PlayStation 2 controller and is a great bonus for fans who love the Saturn version. Easy right, easy left. 
As with a lot of Sega games out there, the real shame of Sega Rally 2006 is that you can't play it anywhere else but the PlayStation 2. There's not even a PC version of this, and the fact that it was only released in a couple of Asian regions makes it even more difficult to come by. The PlayStation 2 is a region-locked machine as well, which means you will need a way to play imports or a Japanese system should you go looking for an original disc. I do think it's worth the trouble if you are a big fan of the first two games and want to see where the series went after it stopped being an arcade game first and foremost. I've never played a Sega Rally that was outright a bad game, and this one tends to be one of the better playing ones if you like arcade style simplicity. The graphics are great for the time period, the music varied, and there are enough cars and tracks here to sink quite a bit of time into. Be wary of the language barrier should it affect you, and understand that you'll likely have your ass handed to you for a while. The difficulty can be off-putting at first, particularly since the timer is always your greatest enemy and will end a race well before it's done, robbing you of any chance to make a comeback. You mess up in the beginning and you might as well restart. Outside of those issues, this was a solid entry that should appeal to a great many of you. It may not have originated on Sega hardware this time, but it definitely still had that Sega magic. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching. And I will catch you next time.